Okay, can we start? Yeah. So before I move on, so I'm just trying to understand your perspective. I mean, what do you guys think of Power BI? The moment somebody is planning to get into data analytics, this is a common word what you hear in the market. Anyone has idea what is Power BI and what do we do exactly with Power BI? Sorry? It's a visualization tool. Okay. Everyone agrees to that? Okay. So let me correct that, guys. Microsoft Power BI is not visualization tool. Actually, the right word is it's a business intelligence application. Any idea? What is the difference between visualization tool and business intelligence application? Yep. Online bot spends, uh, you can unmute and speak. BI is different, guys. And uh, BI is different and visualization tool is different. Anyone has an idea what is the difference between BI and visualization tool? No? Okay. So I think most of you are familiar with the Excel by now. Yes? Okay. Can we create charts in uh, Excel? Yes. Why are we creating charts, guys? Is it really required to create a chart? Yes. To simplify. What are you trying to simplify? According to our needs. Okay. So let's come here. Just for example sake, what I'm doing here is, let me bring up one Excel file. Yeah. Now, if you see this Excel file, so basically, this is a data of a sample superstore, guys. So there is a publicly available data set. The name of the data set is sample superstore. So I'm taking the example of this data set. This data set talks about uh, orders of a supermarket. I think now these days, everyone is familiar with Amazon Flipkart. Yeah. How do you order the products? The same way, uh, we have some uh, orders details here. Now, this is the data. I, my simple requirement, that is, if you come here, yep, we have so many fields here. Now, now out of these fields, now, if I come here, let me come here. So, let me go to one specific field, region. We have another, yep. Can you see this region name here? Now we have region name here, guys. Now I'm trying to understand what are my sales related to each region. Now let me apply filter. If I come here, if I apply my filter, we have like central region, east region, north region, south region, and west region. So my requirement is quite simple. What I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to find out which region we have the highest sale and which region we have the lowest sale. Can we do this? Yeah, we can easily find out. Yeah, how we do this is, for example, let me come here. I take this entire data. I selected entire data and I'm going to create a pivot table. Yeah, I assume everyone is very clear with pivot table. Okay, so let's come here. I go with pivot table. Now I catch hold of region. So now let's come here. I take region name. I got list of all the regions. So now if you see the fields here, we have a field called sales. Now, if I keep it here, then I got my sales information. Now, can somebody quickly tell me which region has the lowest sale? Sorry. Sorry. South or not? South. South. Isn't it confusing a bit? Yes, Instead of this, what I'm doing is, let's come here. I go to insert. Yeah, now let me pick up one simple chart here. I'm just picking something like this. Now, quickly tell me, where do we have the lowest sale? So, just with a glance, we are able to find out where do we have the lowest sale. Yeah, so this is something like we took a data, historical data, and using that historical data, we prepared this visualization, and using that, we are able to come to a function. 
So now this entire process I call as visualization. This is good. But now what I'm trying to do is beyond this visualization, I'm trying to find out why do we have the lowest sale in sound? What can I do better? Yeah. And even in South, yeah, what are the categories we are doing good and what are the characters we are, so, sorry, categories we are not doing good? I mean, which, which categories we have highest to sale and which categories we don't have sales. If we can do some uh, drill down here, then that will give more understanding of the data. So based on that, company can take a decision. Yeah, so this is what we call as BI, guys. I don't know, somehow, in market, we have a wrong perception saying like the Power BI is a visualization application. Absolutely not. It's a business intelligence tool. What you can do is you can take a business problem and you can solve the business problem with various uh, options what we have in Power BI. Using visualizations or connecting one data point with another data point. Or for example, let's say I have sales data in one table and I have uh, uh, products data in another table. Now, if I create a connection between sales and products, they can, then I can find out which product has highest to sell, which product has lowest to sell. If I don't create a connection, it doesn't make sense. Am I correct? So now in Power BI, what do we do? We try to create the connections. And sometimes the data may not come in the required format. We try to arrange it in a particular format. We do all those things. So in short, Power BI is a business intelligence subject. Am I clear? Yeah. As part of this, what we are going to do is we are going to discuss these contents. This is what I started with. Like, what is BI? So basically business intelligence. Now, every business is data driven. Somebody is taking a decision based on data only. Yeah. Even I quoted one example. I don't know how many of you remember a Nokia example. Anyone remember Nokia example? Yeah, Nokia is the best example, guys. Initially, when the Android was developed, yeah, they approached Nokia. They asked Nokia to take the Android software and implement that into their uh, uh, mobile devices. But Nokia said no. Before saying no, if they would have conducted some survey and they would have got some insights from the market, then that would be really useful for Nokia. So by that time, Nokia had like 90% market share. Yes. Now it doesn't have even 9% share in the market. Yeah. So one bad decision, they're out of the market. So now no company is ready to take risk. Yeah. Even in our lives, for example, now let's say some of you are planning to get into job. Some of you are planning to change career. Now, if you want to take a decision, First, you need to check in which domain we have so many opportunities, which technology you should learn. If I learn a particular technology, is it going to help me in future? We need to evaluate all these things. That's also data driven. So now, as we are getting or we are focusing so much on the data, we are getting so many tools which will help us to take the decision in a better way. Yeah, now let's move on. Then, so once we are done with the introduction, yeah, here, we are going to talk about very important thing that is Power BI Desktop. Anyone have the idea what is this Power BI Desktop? Yes, no. No? Okay, how many of you are familiar with online version of Excel? Yeah, Excel online version. Anyone has idea? Once you tried it? Okay. So, here, what we have done is, for example, if I take my instance, I install this app in my machine so that I'm able to use it. Yeah, but even if I don't install it, I can go with the online version of Excel, I can use it. So people, whoever has Office 365 account, you can use it, guys. Yeah, now let's come here. So if you want to use Power BI, I think I have it here. Yes. So we have three components in Power BI, guys. One is Power BI Desktop. Second one is Power BI Service. And third one is Power BI Mobile. So Power BI Desktop is an app which you install on your machines. 
Okay, so using this, whatever the visualizations you are trying to do, you can create all the visualizations and uh, uh, you can do everything else. Apart from one activity that you can't share it with others. Yeah, I'll come, uh, I mean, I'll discuss the difference between Excel and Power BI service. Mm -hmm. Now, if you come here, when you talk about Power BI service, what you can do is it's an online platform for sharing for report sharing and collaboration. What we do, we prepare some reports in Power BI desktop. When you prepare the report, you need to share it with others. For example, let me come here. I have a dashboard here. Yeah, I created this dashboard. Now, if I want to share this dashboard with you all, how do I share it guys? What is the best way to show, share it? Sorry? One way, I take all of your mail IDs and I will send it. Yeah, I will share this entire Excel file. So if you take this entire file, how many sheets we have? Four sheets. One sheet is like a dashboard and another one is like support keywords. And third one is like order sheet. And fourth one is manager. So now I want to share only this dashboard. But am I sharing only the dashboard? No. Along with dashboard, I'm sharing my data also. Yeah. If it, I mean, uh, I'm sending a mail. If authorized person receives that, that's absolutely fine. But some wrong person received it. Then there's the issue. Yeah. Because here we are not only sharing the dashboard, we are sharing entire data here. What are the data we have here? We are sharing this entire data. That's not correct. Yeah. Because now these days everyone is very I mean, very much cared about data security. Yeah, every day we hear like uh, somebody's Instagram account is hacked. Yeah, and uh, somebody's data is available publicly on dark web. We get to hear so many news. Now, the same thing here. I want to share this dashboard, but here the problem is one way I have to mail it or I place it on a folder or drive. I give access to people. Even in that case also, people can download it, the entire file. Yeah, then there's a chance of misuse. Now here, what I'm trying to do is, I want to share only this dashboard. Yeah, once I share this dashboard, see, if I come to data, for example, a CEO is accessing this dashboard. He or she, I mean, if CEO is there, could be he or she, whoever it is, should they have access to the entire data or will you give limited access to CEO? Entire access. But for example, let's say there is a sales manager. Will you give limited access or will you give whole uh, company's uh, access to a sales manager? Limited access. limited access. Now here, if you are sharing this file in Excel format, we can't keep those restrictions. Guys. Wherein, based on the role, they are supposed to access specific information. You can't set those controls here. But if you do the same activity in Power BI, for example, let's say you are the CEO, you will have access. The moment you logged into Power BI, you will be able to see the entire data. But for example, let's say myself, I'm a sales manager. In that case, I will have access only to my region. So you can keep certain restrictions here, which are not possible with Power, sorry, Excel. And also, if I share this file, which means what we are doing is it might be 30 MB or 40 MB file. Yeah. So I'm sending it to almost like, for example, let's say 30 people are there. I'm sending it to 30 people. Those 30 people will download it again. Doesn't it create so much of load on the server? Yeah. So now by considering all these things, what we are doing here is we are using one specific concept that is called Power BI service. Power BI service is an online platform. Same like how do you have your Google Drive? The same way you can publish your dashboards on Power BI services. So whoever has access, they will be able to access a dashboard from Power BI service. Okay, third component what we have is Power BI Mobile. 
Now, these days, I mean, uh, people are moving from one place to another place a lot. If you take the leadership team, like CEOs or CFOs, CXOs, they will be traveling a lot. Yeah. Now, is it possible to sit with the laptop for 24 hours? No. What people are doing, they are giving approvals on mobile. On the go, they are doing so many things. Now, what if, if they want to access the dashboard on mobile itself? They can do it very easily. So, these are the three components what we have here. Power BI Desktop, Power BI Service, and Power BI Mobile. So, what you guys have to do is, if you go to Microsoft Store, for example, let me come here. Uh, if I go to Microsoft Store, for example, let's say Power BI Download. Yeah, now if you come to Microsoft Store, here you will be able to download Power BI Desktop. So using this, you can prepare your reports and whatever the practice you want to do, you can do it. Yeah, for this, you don't have to pay a single rupee. It's free. Yeah, anyone knows a, uh, an application which is like Power BI? Yeah. Tableau, absolutely. Yeah, Tableau is competitor of Power BI, guys. But Tableau is owned by Salesforce and Power BI is owned by Microsoft. It's a Microsoft product. Okay, so if you want to use Tableau, uh, you will be given trial period of one week. You can download Power Tableau, you can install, but you will get a trial period of one week. After that, if you want to use, you have to purchase the license or as some of your students, even you can uh, take student license also. Yeah, that, that's like a bit limited access. But when it comes to Power BI guys, so here you can download Power BI, it's free. Yeah, but if you want to install Power BI, let me go with configuration also. Uh, minimum 8 GB RAM is required. Okay, and it must be SSD. i5 or i7 is better. I'm not saying that if you have uh, uh, i3 or if you have 4 GB RAM, you can't work. Still, you can work. But the problem is, it will be very slow. Okay, so you must have SSD and you must have minimum 8 GB RAM and i5 or i7 or latest uh, i3 processor would be better. These are like hardware component requirements. Yeah, so you can download this from here. And uh, the moment you download it, it will ask for a sign in. You don't have to sign in uh, because we are just using it for practice purpose. Then you can start using it. Now, the moment you open Power BI, this is how it looks, guys. If you observe it, the interface looks pretty similar to Excel. Am I correct? Yeah. So that's like another advantage what we have. People who are good with Excel, they can easily work with Power BI. And if I go very specific, to use Power BI, there are certain prerequisites. One is, you must know how to use Pivot Table. In Pivot Table, we have a feature, right? For example, let me come to this Excel file. Yeah, can you see this? So on right hand side, we have field list. So what we are doing is based on the requirement, we drag and drop these headers into rows or columns or uh, values or filters. So if you know this feature, you see same kind of feature even in Power BI. Can you see, we have so many visualizations here. These are the default visualizations what we have here. Guys. So using them after loading the data, we will work. But even if you want to work, we will drag and drop the headers. We'll play with the headers. So prerequisite is like, at least you must have some familiarity with pivot. Then once we are done with this, the next prerequisite is SQL. Hope you guys remember in SQL, we discussed joints. Yeah, to discuss joints, we discussed a particular concept called primary key for it. What was the use of joints, guys? Sorry? to combine the data. Am I correct? Yeah. Even in Power BI, what do we do? So when we have multiple tables, we combine one table with another table. So the concept we call as data modeling. Data modeling. So if you want to go with data modeling, guys, first you must know what is the primary key, what is the foreign key. Yeah. 
and what is the star schema, what is the snowflake schema, what is galaxy schema, you must know all these things. If you don't know these topics, then it will be really difficult. Sometimes we go with left join, sometimes we go with right join. Yeah, I'm not saying that if you don't know Power SQL, you can't learn Power BI. I'm not saying that. But <clears throat> if you really want to become proficient, having Excel knowledge and having SQL knowledge are mandatory. If you don't have them, still you can learn Power BI, but you will not become proficient. Am I clear with this? Yeah. So now, if you come here, what do we do? Using all these features, we work. Again, in Power BI, we have two aspects. So what you see here, we call this as front end. Yeah. On the back end, we have a process where uh, we take the data, we do a lot of uh, transformations to the data. So that concept we call as, can you see this here? Get and transform data with Power Query. So using Power Query, what do we do? We go with ETL processes. Anyone has idea what is this ETL process? Yeah, extract, transform, and load. Now, using this extract, what do we do? We extract the data from different, different sources. Every time, do you expect your data will be in Excel files? No. Sometimes we, ta we take data from web pages. Sometimes we take data from databases. Sometimes we take data from other sources. Yeah, or maybe some application is there. For example, let's say Salesforce is there. Salesforce is a CRM application. Now, what if you want to directly take the data from CRM application? You can do it. Or you, you guys might have heard SAP. Yeah, what if you want to connect your visualization application directly with this? You can do all those things. Guys. We call that as extract. Once you extract it, the data may be in a different format. Now you need to get your data into the required format. We call that as transform. The best example I always quote is, what is the date format we follow guys in India? DDMMYY. For example, let's say I'm rolling out a dashboard to a person who is sitting in US. Now, can I send my data in DDMMYY format? No, because US follow MMDDYY format. So I have to change my data then. So that is nothing but transformation based. I mean, I just gave very simple example. It doesn't look always the same. Yeah, then when we are done with extraction, when we are done with transformation, how do you load your data? Yeah, you might have observed, for example, let's say you are watching uh, a video on YouTube. If the internet is slow, it will be buffered a lot. Am I correct? Yeah, because there what's happening, the data load is not happening. Sometimes what happens, when you have so much of records, guys, for example, let's say you take State Bank of India fact table. I just mentioned that they will not have 2,000 or 3,000 rows data in fact table. In fact table, you have like 20 million rows of data, 30 million rows of data. If you want to load that entire data to any specific application, you have to take care of some refining process. Yeah, because loading 20 million rows of data, imagine how much would be the Data size, guys, 20 million. 1 million, 10 lakh rows, 20 million, which is almost like two crores rows of data. Yeah, it's very difficult to load so much of data. But these days, we are working on those data sets. Now, if you are trying to load those kind of data sets, uh, there is a certain process. We will talk about all these things. This entire process we call as ETA. Okay, so we have even some jobs which are called as ETL developer. These guys, they rigorously work with the databases. Yeah, they get the data, they fine tune the data and they load the data into different, different applications. So we have some jobs called as the ETL developers, but we are not trying to get into ETL uh, developer. So we are trying to become a Power BI developer. Guys. Even in Power BI, we use ETL process a lot. As process, uh, uh, sorry, as part of ETL process, we'll be working with all these aspects. Like how to connect to multiple sources. Yeah, when you connect to a particular source, how to e extract the data in a optimal manner, and how do you transform your data? We talk about all these things. Once we are done with this, 
we go to data modeling. In data modeling, these are the concepts we are going to discuss. Yeah, so here we need to specifically mention about one important point that is M language. Yeah, so people uh, who are really good with Excel, they might have heard BBA, Visual Basic for Applications, which is used to write code in Excel guys. The same way, if you want to perform any advanced tasks, here we use a particular language. We call that language as M language. So using this language, we do some activities in data model. Yeah, we create some calculated columns. We will discuss this. So this M language is used in Power Query guys. Yeah, once we are done with this, there is another language which is called DAX. Yeah, the full form of DAX is data analysis expressions. Now, if you have some data like this, if you want to analyze this data, you have to do some extra activities. To do those e extra activities, we need some specific uh, formulas, some specific calculation steps. To do those calculations, we are going to use DAX. So if you ask me, what is the tough concept in Power BI? DAX. Have you guys learned or how, have you guys struggled so much when you learned Excel functions? The same way, here we have so many functions. We will talk about all those things. Once we are done with the, all these concepts, then we will publish the dashboard, which means we will share it with others. Yeah, till here, yeah, even if you have Power BI desktop, this is fine, till this part. But if you want to publish your dashboard, then you must have access to Power BI services. Okay, if you want to publish your dashboard, then you must have Power BI license. So what are the licensing concepts we have? How much we have to pay? We will discuss all those things later. But as part of Power BI curriculum, so we are going to discuss all these things. Let me take a pause here, see any questions we have. Am I scaring anyone? Yeah, so we have long way to go, guys. So now in market, there's so much of requirement for the people who are really good with the Excel, query language, and business intelligence tool. I'm not saying Power BI, guys. Any business intelligence application. If you are good with Excel, SQL, and any business intelligence application. Because few organizations use Tableau, few organizations use uh, Power BI, few organizations use Spotify. There are so many business intelligence applications. Depends on the company we use. Yeah, but for freshers, this will be like a good start to go with uh, Excel, SQL, and Power BI. So after gaining some experience, after gaining some domain knowledge, if you are really interested, go for Python also. Now this is a crazy skill set what we have. Excel, SQL, Power BI, and Python. In place of Python, people are going with the other programming languages like uh, uh, Alteryx, Snowflakes. Yeah, they are used for automation guys. Even people are using. If anybody is specifically targeting uh, JP Morgan, yeah, JPMC, hope oh, you guys might have heard the name, JP Morgan and Chase. Yeah, so uh, in JPMC, they specifically use uh, Tableau a lot and Alteryx a lot. So it depends on the company. If you're targeting, you have to get into those specific applications. But generally, most of the opportunities what we have in these days, I mean, these days we have most of the opportunities in Tableau. Any questions? I'm expecting so many questions.
No? Okay. Let me quickly give you one more example, guys. So just I'll just come here. Let's see whether we have it here or not. Yeah, this is what I mentioned, guys. It takes some time. We have to be a bit patient here. Yeah. So now let's come here. If I come to model view. Can you see this here? How many tables I have, guys? Two tables. One is like orders table and another one is day table. Now, here what we have done is we have created a connection from orders table to date table. So this is what we call as data modeling, guys. I mean, I'm just uh, giving very simple example here. Okay, now if you observe this, so let me place my cursor here. How is the connection created? Anyone has idea? <laughs> Yeah, now here we have created a connection from order date to date. So here, let me bring up one more word. We call this as granularity. If you observe this here, yeah, here, what kind of relationship we have? Yeah, now if you see this here, so here, can you see one? And here we see star. So here, we call this as one to many relationship. Yeah, sometimes we use one to one, sometimes we use one to many, sometimes we use many to many, sometimes we use many to one. Yeah, now if you see this arrow, it is saying that this is one to many relationship. Now, how we created what is the primary key, what is the foreign key? If you don't have understanding of this, we can't work with this date table. Guys. Yeah, now if I want to create a visualization. So here, this is how we create the visualizations. Yeah, it's still loading. I know this is uh, not exactly, I mean, it doesn't look like a visualization, but here we consider this as visualization. So now if I come here, can you see this one, two, three? We call this as card. What it is displaying is, it is displaying like total amount. Yeah, now these are the fields what we have. We take care of the field and we drag and drop them here. Can you see the fields here? Yeah. So this is the reason I said, if you don't know how to work with pivot table, it will be different. And also, uh, you guys are familiar with slicer timeline in Excel. We have the similar kind of concepts here. Can you see this? Slicer. So all these three applications are very much connected. That's the reason to get into Power BI, Excel and SQL are prerequisites. Yeah, now let me come here. Let's see, we have anything. 
Yeah. I mean, if you, it's not a great visualization, but uh, let me go with this. At least by looking at this, we can understand when do we have the highest sale and when do we have the lowest sale. Yeah. So that it gives me a overview like uh, when will I have my highest sale. So based on this, I can plan my inventory for next year. This is what I'm calling as business interior space. Yeah. To this, I can add one more dimension so that I can go for further drill bar. So we are going to do all these things with objects. Yeah, let me come here. So let me show you one important thing. I know uh, we have so many pressures here, but anyone heard there is a term called YTD, MTD? Yes? Anyone heard? Yeah, what is the full form of YTD, guys? Year to? Yeah, year to till date. That's correct. So let's come here. This is very commonly used word in business, uh, in any business, guys. For example, let's say, when does our financial year starts in India? First April. Yeah. Now, first April to what is today's date? 10th June. Now, first April to till today, we do some calculations. This is what we call as YTD. Because all the calculations are done based on financial years. Yeah. Now, again, we are in on June 10th. Now, June 1st to June 10th, there will be some transactions. Now, if you are, if you are trying to track those numbers, we call them as MTD. So, these are the two important terms what we use in business. Terms. YTD calculations and MTD calculations. If you want to do the same calculations in Excel, you have to bang your head. That's not easy to do these calculations in Excel. But in Power BI, directly we have the function for MTD calculation in YTD. So, if you ask me which one will be easy to work, even uh, beyond Excel, we have so many features in Power BI. Am I clear? Can you see this here? Now, for example, let me come here. Yeah. So, if you see this, this is my total sale, guys. In October, this is the total sale. In uh, November, this is the total sale. And in December, this is the total sale, like month-wise. Now, but when it comes to YTD calculation, yeah, here, the numbers are added here. I think uh, here the logic is not correct. Yeah, I think there is one more filter. That's the reason we see something different here. But let me take it here, guys. Is there a filter or a slicer? Okay, that's fine. So here. Yep. Yeah, uh, we kept a condition here, guys, that uh, the financial aid should close by October. That's the condition we set here. Now, if you see this here, November, we have like 70,000. And in December, we have like 41,000. Now, if you observe the number here, this YTD calculation, 70 plus 40, the total number you see. Yeah, then if you see this here, so in Jan 2017, we have like 3,68,000, and the whole is added here. So this is YTD calculations. Yeah, so here financial year closed by October 31st. So here we have two more words, uh, especially MNCs, they call it as fiscal year and financial year. So if they follow different financial year, then we call that as fiscal year. We will talk about all these things. Okay. Hope I'm not confusing anyone. Is Bobby a scary? No, once we start working with these guys, we will really, really enjoy it. And it will be really interesting also to work with Bobby.
No further questions? Online participants, anyone has any questions? Sorry, I did not ask anyone's self-induction today, guys. Any questions? So, Jenny, you are speaking something. I'm not able to hear you. Okay. Am I able now? Uh, still, it's very low. I mean, if you have a problem with mic, can you please uh, put it in chat? Even you can communicate in chat. Yeah, sure. Any questions, guys? Yeah, please. Sir, let me ask so much of advantage in here and for here. We are expecting the data, we are collecting it in the data. Then is Excel left to only report the data and what? Okay, to answer your question, so when we have so many advanced features in Power BI and SQL, why are we using Excel? Yeah. Now, for example, let's say I have a small restaurant. Okay, I'm the owner. I don't have any partners. Do I really need Power BI there? Not required. Yeah, I want to, even, even I have restaurant, I'll have so much of data with me. I need to manage my customer's data. I need to manage my sales data. I need to manage my inventory. All these things, even accounts, especially every month, we have to go for the GST filing. Yeah. So even for that, we need one application. So now, if I want to handle uh, uh, all the requirements, then if you want to work with Power BI, you have to sit and learn. You need some expertise to work with Power BI. But if it is Excel, even people who are from uh, business domain, even if they know basics of Excel, still they are managing. I know many people, guys. They are not good at Excel. They are good at their business. But still, they play with Excel like anything. Yeah. So they, they don't need a database. If I have a restaurant, why do I need a database? Because my business setup is very small. So I don't maintain a separate server. I don't maintain my database. And I don't share any data or any visualizations with anyone. But I want to see what is my sales time. Then I can do all those activities in Excel. Yeah. And also, if you want to uh, use Power BI, okay, Power BI is not free. Yeah, Power BI, uh, for example, let's say there are 100 employees in my company. Let's imagine. Yeah, if I want to share a dashboard with 100 people, I need to buy license for all 100 people. Yeah, each license costs $10 per month. Each license. I mean, each user license costs $10 per month. If it is Tableau, I mean, standard pricing is like they are charging $30 per month. As the price is competitive, people are using Power BI. That's a different story. But now here, if I want to go with Excel, yeah, Excel comes at very low cost. Yeah, now you can imagine if I have 100 people, 100 into 10, $1,000. Every month spending $1,000, is it really easy? very costly. So by considering other factors, still people are using it. Even Microsoft knows it very well. 
That's the reason though Power BI and Excel both are from Microsoft, even in Excel, they are bringing up so many new features. So many. You have so many business intelligence features. That is the reason you see here this data. We saw one example on it, get and transform data. This is Power Query. The same Power Query is available in Excel and the same is available in Power BI. But based on the requirement, people use. Did it answer your question? Any other? No? Okay. Then for tomorrow, guys, please download Power BI desktop. Yeah, if you just download it, uh, you can uh, uh, execute the setup file. You can easily, the setup will be completed. Yes. Install the Power BI desktop and uh, come for the next session. Yeah, for Power BI, mandate, we must have laptop. Are we good? You're welcome, Sarjanya. Okay, so Power BI, I'll stop it here for today, guys. Yeah, so we have one uh, pending SQL topic. We will continue with that. Okay, so people who joined for uh, Power BI, guys, you can uh, drop off. There are a few people who are for uh, SQL. They will continue. So this is a website, guys. PowerBI.Microsoft.com. So if you come here, uh, let me click on download. If I click on this, then it will redirect you to Microsoft Store. You can go to this Microsoft Microsoft Store and uh, if you come here, Power BI Desktop. As I have already installed, it says open. Otherwise, you see download. You just need to download it. Okay. Yeah. Let's continue, guys. Let me close this up. Yes, if you, if you want, I'll share this uh, course content with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can keep a track. Like, what are the concepts you are confident? When we are discussing the concepts in uh, sessions, you can cross-check whether the topics are covered or not. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, you should have a cross-reference saying like which topics you are confident. And if you have any clar clarifications with any topic, you can make a note of it. So please keep it handy, guys. Okay, let me close it up. I don't need it. Okay, let me come back to SSMS. Okay, so today what we are going to do is we will see how to create or how to set up a user. Okay, then how to give access to this user, guys. So let me call this as user management.
Any questions with the uh, view? Everybody tried creating view, altering the view, and even we tried dropping the view also. Does anyone have any questions? No, yes. No. Okay. No? Okay. Yeah, then let's come here, guys. I go to SSMS. So far, what we have done is we worked with the databases. Okay, now here, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to set up a user or I'm going to create a user. So wherein that user will have limited access. Okay, so when I say limited access, for example, let's say there is a user. Yeah, so if there is a user, does he or she will be given access to the all databases here? No, guys. For example, let's say I joined with HR. If I join with HR, why do I need access to sales data? I'll not be given access to sales data. Now, access will be given very restricted. Now, we are going to do the same thing here, guys. Now, here, what I'm going to do, let me come to security. If you come to security, now, if you expand this, the first option you see here is logins. Can you see this? Yeah, now what you can do is, you can come to security. If you make a right click, you see new. Under that, we have so many other options. Can you see this here? And one of them is login. So this is one way how you can create a login. The second way is, if you come to logins, now, let me make a right click. And here, directly, you see the option for new login. Okay. Now, if I click on new login, same like how we restored the database, you see similar kind of uh, option here. Yeah. Now, here, what you need to do is, let me come back here, guys. Can you see this? So I got into instruction files here. In instruction files, there is a file called creating a user and granting table level permission. Now, if you open this document, you see all the explanation. You can go to security and if you make a right click and you need to get into new login. This is one way. Yeah, the other way is directly you can come to login. How we did. The same way, you can come to logins and you can click on new log. Now, if I click on new login, I get the same window. Can you see the window? Now, let me come back here. You see the same thing. Now, here, depends on the organization, they use authentication space. If they are using Windows authentication, this will be set by IT team. But here, as we are trying to create it, instead of Windows authentication, what I'll do is let me go with SQL Server Authentication. So let's come here, SQL Server Authentication. Okay, now, so if I want to give password, first I should give the login name. Now, what I'm doing is, let's say TMF underscore DA1 underscore user one. So this is a user I'm creating this. When we are creating the users, uh, we give the access at two levels. One is like individual level or team level access. So here, uh, whether it is a team level access or individual level access, the process is same. Now, let me come here. I give the password. For example, let's say admin, I'm going with the default password is, that is admin at the rate one, two. You need to confirm your password, admin at the rate one, two. The moment I talk about this, people will ask, should I give only this password? No, it's up to you. Whatever the password you want to give, you can give guys. Then let me scroll down. If you scroll down, okay. Let me give you a walk through this. We selected SQL Server Authentication. Then we gave the password. Then if you scroll down, default to database. To which database you are trying to give access? Now, if you come here, what is the default database we have here, guys? So sorry. What is the default database we have here? Master. Now, you can come here. 
you can select a particular database. Now here, what I'm doing is I'm saying TMF DA1. So let me select this. Yeah. So to this database, I'm trying to give access. Now let me come back here. So we selected this. And the moment we select a particular database, you need to say, okay. Let me go with, okay, guys. It's done. Now, here, can you see the user here? Now, a user is created here. TMF DA1 underscore user1. Now, this user has access to entire database of TMF DA1. Even in this, if you want to restrict access to specific table, you can do that. So let me come back here. If you follow the instructions here. Yeah, now here what I will do. Let me come back here. So here, this is the user. Now, to this user, what I'm doing is, let me come to user mapping. Now, right now, this user is mapped to TMF DA1. Okay, then in this database role membership, here, what do we do? We give the access test. Now, if you see this, it is currently public, yeah? If you give access admin, then what happens? This person will have read and write access. To the entire database, you are giving read and write access. Is that okay? Do we give read and write access? Not always, no. Maybe if you have to give, we will give uh, admin access. Else, we don't give. So here, you can define what kind of membership you want to give. You can do that. Okay, so now if I come back to this document, let me come here. So here, public is selected. Yeah, now I'll come here and let me say, okay. Then next thing what we do here is, you can use the same query guys. Yeah, here, what I'm doing is I come to SSMS. Let me go with new query. Now, what I'm doing is I'm trying to give access to a particular table. So to do that, here we have a script, guys. Generally, people don't remember this script. Yeah. Now here, what I'm doing is let me select this. And I come to SSMS. First, let's say use TMF. Here. Then let me paste my code, whatever I copied. Okay. Now, if we come here, you paste the same thing here. Yeah. Paste the following query into the query window and execute. Replace. So here we have the name, guys and with the actual username of the user you created. What is the user we created, guys? Sorry? TMF, DA1, underscore, user1. Is that correct? Yeah. Can you see this here? We have the username what we created here. TMF, underscore, DA1, underscore, user1. Yeah, now let me execute this. So right now what it is saying, you have access to only one table. Yeah, because in this database, we have only one table, guys. That is employee data. Now, what you do is you come here, you copy this. Yeah, and you place it here. If you execute this query, then what, what happens is you are granting access 
to this user to this table. Let's say there are 10 tables. Then what happens? We will get the complete list and using that list, we will try to give access. Am I clear? So that here, what we are doing is we are restricting the access. Am I clear? Yeah. Now, if I go with this, can you see this? We have multiple here. Now, if you want to give access to all these tables, you just copy the entire thing and you place them in the query editor. And if you execute them, you will grant access. But out of this, I copy only few. And if I execute them, then the user will have access only to those tables. So this is how we grant access. Are we good? Yeah. Some of you will be thinking, are we going to do all these things? Sometimes we have to guess. Not every time. Most of the data analysts, they will have, they will not have access to all these activities. But for example, let's say you join with a startup. Then there is no other way. Everything you have to manage on your own. In those cases, you may create a database, you may create a table, or you may create a user. That's the reason we discussed all this. Any questions? Looks like a lengthy process. Am I correct? Yeah, but don't worry, guys. You have this document. These are simple steps. I just followed the steps what we have here. Any questions? Any questions, sir? No, sure. Seems like you have a question. Definitely we will do a project, but not immediately. Yeah. So concept wise, what are the topics we planned, we covered. But project, once we are done with uh, some of the topics in Power BI, then again, we will come back to SQL. The reason why, after a few days, definitely we'll forget everything. Yeah. If you continuously work on Power BI for 10 days, and if you don't touch SQL, I bet you forget everything. Then we need a revision. That we will do a bit later. That's not purely only on SQL. We will keep a mix of uh, SQL concepts with Power BI so that it uh, you will have a complete project. But if you are really interested to do any project, the best source I suggest is Kaggle. Anyone has idea? Yeah, can you tell me? Data? Sets? Yeah, this is a website, guys. So many competitions are data related competitions are run on Kaggle. Yeah, we have so many data sets here. So whatever the interested data set you have, you can pick up and you can start working. Yeah, and also sometimes uh, people uh, really struggle with the queries. Yeah, if you come here, sometimes there are some solved queries also. You can just see the query. And if it is working for you, then you can take the query from there and you can start using. People who are coming from Python background, they use Kaggle a lot. Am I correct? So, but general people ask me, where can we get the data sets? Even if you want to practice with Excel guys, there are thousands of data sets here. You can use them. Yeah, and uh, I have one more suggestion here. People who are especially looking for jobs, try to create a profile on Git, GitHub. If you're targeting for good packages, have a profile on GitHub, okay, and try to publish your dashboards. So when you go for interview, you can share that link with the recruiter or the hiring manager. So they'll go through your work, then compare with others, certainly you'll have edge. This is what most of the people are doing, guys. They are keeping something like uh, visit my website before the LinkedIn profile. 
yeah, be below the name, they are mentioning like visit my website. So they are creating the dashboards and uh, they are uh, making it publicly available. Instead of wasting time on a technical evaluation, what people are doing is they are asking for the profiles or the sample reports or the projects, what you have done. They'll go through that. So they, they'll come to a conclusion on your on your technical skills. This is a trend what's happening in the mark, hiding market now. So keep sample files ready with you. Yeah, tell me, sir, any other question? Are we good? Okay, for example, let me pick up this one, guys. Smartphones data set. If you come here, yeah, somebody has done some uh, analysis on it. You see this uh, analysis here. This is the data set what we have. Now let me scroll down. You'll have complete details here. If you want to download the data set, if you just click on it, you'll be able to download it. Yeah, all the files are in, uh, all the files here are zipped. You need to unzip them and you can start using them. Yeah, I think only one of our friends knows about it. Do you have already familiar with Kaggle, sir? Okay. Yeah, why uh, people uh, from data science, they use it a lot because they have some statistical models also here. Yeah, so using these models, uh, they can work. I know this is out of my topic, but whoever is interested, you can create one account, guys, and you can start using. You don't have to pay a single rupee for this. Yeah, am I clear with the uh, user creation? Any questions? No? Okay, then let's come here, guys. We don't have it here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, now let's come here, guys. So we have one more important topic that is transaction control management. Yeah, then uh, immediately people will ask me, are we going to do any transactions? To some extent, yes. For example, let's say, I'll go with very simple example here. We have been using employee table for a quite long time. Yes, okay, I'll give you a specific scenario here. For example, let's say there is one employee. For example, let's say Jones is there. What is the department ID for Jones? 20. 20? So now 20 refers to accounts and finance. Now let's imagine Jones is interested in operations. He's planning to go to internal job posting. We call this as IJP. Yeah. Uh, he went through the IJP process. He cleared it. And now from accounts and finance he is moving to operations then in that case we have to change this department id of jones am i correct yeah so then what we are doing is we are taking one existing transaction to this existing transaction we are trying to modify so we call this as a transaction yeah then the other way i i talked about uh, abibus or red bus yeah, the moment you book your ticket, the transaction should be confirmed. Yeah, otherwise it should be released and it should allow others to use them. So we call that as rollback. Now, these are the two aspects what we are going to discuss. 
Yeah, now here, what we are doing is we are using employee database. So this is how we are writing this. Begin transactions, and I'm trying to up update employee details here. Wherein a particular employee location ID, I'm trying to update. So if I connect the same example with the previous example, what we discussed. Now here, what I do, I write set department ID. Yeah, already I have 20 as my department ID. So I'll keep the new department ID here, 40, where update this for a particular employee. Then what happens if I execute this transaction, then the record will be updated. Am I making sense? We don't do it very frequent. Very rare we do. But even uh, you join as a data analyst, you must know this concept. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So sometimes what happens, the transactions will be, uh, they will not be completed. Yes. Sometimes they fail. Now, if you want to see all the transactions information, then you can use this tool. Yeah, the best example, uh, for example, let's say you went to ATM. You are trying to make a transaction guess. You just entered the, I mean, you entered your pin and you entered the amount also. All of a sudden power gone. Or the machine got turned off. Then the transaction will be completed. No, right? Now, uh, we need to check how many transactions are there like that. Then, when you want to take a list of all the uh, uncommitted transactions, you can use this query. Yeah, people who are into accounts reconciliations. People who are into accounts reconciliation. How many of you are from DCOM background here? Yes. Can you tell me what is accounts reconciliation, sir? No? Okay. For example, let's say I take my bank statement. Yeah. Somebody told me that uh, they made uh, 10,000 payment. Now I'm trying to cross check with my statement test whether I see, receive the payment or not. So here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to check my account. So this entire process we call as accounts reconciliation. This is very common activity. Guys. Now, so when let's say somebody is working in ATM reconciliations, what they do is if you get a problem with uh, your cash transactions in ATM, they ask you to raise a request or UPI transactions case. Yeah, if the net is down, you're trying to do a UPI transaction. Sometimes it fails. Then they say that your amount will be refunded within three days or one week. How it's happening is they do the reconciliations here. If they find any uncompleted transactions like this, then they settle the amount back. They reverse the amount. In those scenarios, we use this transaction controls. Am I making sense? Very much connected with the today's world because UPI people are using like anything. Sometimes when the net is down, transactions will fail. Yeah, then we have to wait for some time. I think that's the common issue with uh, Google Pay. Anybody tried doing high tra high value transaction on Google Pay? They keep the limit as 50,000, but sometimes the transactions keep failing. I don't know why. Then the money will be stuck. You have to wait for three days or one week to get the amount back. Yeah, now here, once you begin the transaction, guys, yeah, you executed this query. But for example, let's say after executing, you came to know that uh, you changed the details for a wrong person. Then we go with undo, the same thing. If you want to undo, then we call that as permit rollback transactions. Yeah, but Let's say everything is successful, then you can commit the transaction. But if you want to roll it back, then you can use this rollback transaction. 
as a data analyst, we'll not be using these very much, guys. But you must be familiar with these topics, like user creation and transaction control. Most of the times, uh, what we do, either as a data analyst, we'll be using joins a lot. Okay. Then we use union a lot. The same concept we have in Power BI, I guess. And we write subquests. Beyond this, people who are into development roles, they use one more word a lot. That is, anyone has idea? People call it as stored procs even. Yeah, this is like a bit advanced in C. Stored procs, these are like powerful subqueries. Yes. By including multiple conditions, we get into stored process. Are we good? Yeah, I think uh, these are the two topics which are pending. I know, so we need to go with uh, multi-row also, multi-row subquery. Yeah, one small request. If you come to the queries here, what's this window? Yeah, there is a query called subqueries here. Here we have uh, some queries, guys. Please uh, use them. Okay. And also, I'll share one more scenario. I'll put it in the WhatsApp group. Okay. We'll discuss this again. Siddharth, any questions, sir? Uh, no, sir. No. Was it like a bouncer today? <laughs> yes. Yeah, please uh, go through these things. If you have any question, uh, connect to me. I mean, connect with me personally. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, then uh, I'll stop okay. it here for today. Uh, anytime, the, please. Uh, present, the, yeah. these queries are in Pyris uh, 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 5, right? If you come to this folder, Oh, queries. Okay. oh, yes. Yeah, queries folder. In sub queries, sorry. Uh, yeah, you can use sub queries. I mean, we have all the queries here. Just okay. make a right click on any file and try to open with the notepad. Okay. Okay, then uh, I'll stop it here for today. Okay, okay. Hope Thank the Power BI introduction was not boring. Oh, no, not boring. It's okay. an interesting one only. Okay. Then uh, see you with that. We will connect first. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye.